Hello and welcome to this class. The topic for today is coefficient of variation. My name is Eunice Frimpon and I'll take you through this class. What is coefficient of variation? Now the coefficient of variation is a standardized measure of dispersion. So it expresses the relative variability of a data set. That is how spread out is the data compared to its mean. So especially it is useful when you are comparing two or more data sets with different unit scales. And the mathematical formula for calculating the coefficient of variation is eva equals the standard deviation of the data set divided by the mean of the data set times 100%. So for samples, we have the standard deviation, which is small s, divided by the mean, which is x bar, times 100%, giving us the coefficient of variation. And for populations, we have sigma over mu times 100%, where sigma stands for the population standard deviation, and mu stands for the population mean. So you multiply this times 100% to give you the value for your coefficient of variation. So why does coefficient of variation matter? It allows fair comparison of variability across data sets with different units or skills. So like for example, you may be comparing milliseconds to megabytes. You are able to see the variability within these different data sets, which have different units using the coefficient of variation. So a lower coefficient of variation means the data is more consistent or stable and a desirable feature in most systems. Most systems want stability. When you have any system of operation, you are always looking forward to have a stable system so that they can produce the results that you are looking for. So it is especially useful in fields like server response times, that is to access the stability across days or devices. So here in the example one, you want to know how stable your several response times are over days and across different devices. B, you can also check web traffic analysis to monitor user behavior consistency. And also you could use this in fields like energy consumption tracking, where you try to identify erratic usage in lab equipment. So let's look at an example in, on calculating the coefficients of variation. The example reads, a car dealership is analyzing its performance over the past three months. The average number of cars sold per month is X bar, which is the sample mean, and is given as 87, with a standard deviation of S equals five. The average commission earned per month is $5,225, with a standard deviation of $773. Now, which of the two, car sales or commissions, shows more consistency. So the first aspect of the data talks about is data for car sold. So that this is the mean of car sold, the standard deviation of car sold. The second part of the data talks about the commissions, okay? So this is the average commission per month and then the standard deviation of commission per month. So which of these two data sets, is it car sold or commissions, which of them have more stability? in the data set. To compare such two data sets, which have two units, car sold is count of numbers. Commission here is an amount, which is being measured in dollars. It is not possible to look at the standard deviation alone of five for car sold and the standard deviation alone of commission to compare to say that based on their standard deviations, given that in the case of car loan, S is equal to five. And in the case of commissions, S is equal to 773, there is more stability in castle. No, they have different units. So you need a more robust measure of variation to determine which of these two have, which of these two variables have more stability in their data set. So the coefficients of variation will help us. We will find the coefficients of variation for each of them. So we'll calculate coefficients of variation for castle, and then we'll calculate the coefficients of variation for commission. Then based on the values we get, we'll make our deductions. Let's start with the coefficient of variation for car sales. The formula is 
standard deviation over mean times 100%. So from the question, the standard deviation is 5, and the mean is 87. So we have 5 over 87 times 100%, which is approximately 5.75%. In the case of commission, the formula once again is standard deviation over mean times 100%. So we have standard deviation of 773 over mean of 5225, which we have here, times 100%, approximately equals to 14.79%. Therefore, the value of coefficients of variation for car sales is 5.75%, and the coefficients of variation for commission is 14.79%. So in conclusion, car sales are more consistent than commissions because they have a lower coefficient of variation, which is 5.75, as compared to 14.79 in the case of commission. Now, we realize that these standard deviations were measured as against their respective means. So this is a very standardized measure of variation for two different kinds of data sets to determine which of them is most stable. Example two. A company monitors the daily downtime in minutes of two servers over one week. The results show server A has an average downtime of mean equals 12 minutes with a standard deviation of S equals 3.6 minutes. Server B has an average downtime of X mean equals 40 minutes with a standard deviation of S equals 6.8 minutes. Which server is more consistent in terms of uptime reliability? Because we have two different kinds of servers and we are trying to check which of them is more consistent, we can apply the coefficients of variation to find the one that is more consistent. And take note, in the data, we are given the mean and standard deviation. So this also gives an indication that you can use the coefficients of variation as a measure of check. So let's find the coefficients of variation from going forward, I'll be calling it a SIVA. Let's find the SIVA of server A and then the SIVA of server B. For server A, we have standard deviation of 3.6 over the mean of 12 times 100%, giving us 30%. And for server B, we have standard deviation of 6.8 divided by the mean of 40 times 100%, giving us 17%. So the SIVA of server A is 30%. The SIVA of server B is 17%. Now, in conclusion, even though server A has less average downtime, it is more inconsistent. Server B is more reliable because it has a lower coefficient of variation, right? So take note, once you're comparing two different kinds of data sets and they have a respective mean and standard deviations, check the SIVA of each of these data sets and then compare their SIVAs to know which of the data sets is more consistent. Let's try example three together. Two mobile apps were tested for response time. Ape has a mean response time of 120 ms and a standard deviation of 15 ms. App B has a mean of 90 ms and a standard deviation of 18 ms. Which app has more consistent response times? So let's get into the solution. Now for so here I'll say the app, then the mean, then the standard deviation. So I have here app A has mean of 120, standard deviation of 15, and then app B has mean of 90, standard deviation of 18. So the next step is to find the, which app has more consistent response time. So I'm going to use the SIVA approach. So the SIVA of app A is equal to the standard deviation all over the mean times 100%. And the SIVA of app B equals the standard deviation, which is 18 over 90 times 100%. So in this case, we can simplify this as the SIVA for App A is 12.5% and the SIVA of App B is 20%. So in conclusion, which app has more consistent response times is the app that has the lower SIVA. And in this case, it is App A. 
Therefore, so app A is more consistent in response time. Let's look at the fourth example and work it out together. Two coders were timed while debugging programs. Coda A averaged 45 minutes with a standard deviation of three minutes. Coda B averaged 35 minutes with a standard deviation of five minutes. Who is more consistent? So here we have the coda, we have the mean, we have the standard deviation. We have coda A and coda B. Coda A has mean of 45 minutes. Coda B has standard deviation of three. Coda A has standard deviation of three, sorry. Coda B has a mean of 35 minutes and a standard deviation of five. So now we need to find the, because we want to know who is more consistent, we need to find the coefficients of variation for each of them. So let's find the C bar for coda A, and that is standard deviation over mean times 100%, given us, We'll find it later. And let's find the C bar of coda B, which is standard deviation all over the mean times 100%. So in the case of the C bar for coda A, we have 300 divided by 45, and that's giving us 6.67%. In the case of coda B, we have 500 divided by 35, and that's 14.29%. Therefore, since the C bar for coda A is lower, we conclude that coda A is more consistent. Now, here are four examples for your personal or group practice. Calculate the coefficients of variation for each case and determine which item is more consistent. Make time to practice these to ground your understanding of the concept of coefficients of variation. So in conclusion, why coefficients of variation matters? The coefficients of variation is a powerful tool for comparing variability across data sets, even when they differ in scale or units. A lower SIVA indicates higher consistency and reliability. And this is crucial in systems where performance stability is important. Use the SIVA to support data-driven decisions in fields such as data science, where you can identify stable models or features, systems analysis, where you can evaluate server or application performance, and also in cybersecurity, where you can monitor response time variability and system reliability. Always interpret SIVA in context. It is most meaningful when comparing similar types of data. Thank you for being in this class and thank you for paying attention. I'll see you in the next class. All the best.